Good morning you guys and welcome back to my channel for another video. I wanted to get on and give you a little intro. Today's video is sponsored by Night Zookeeper. Thank you so much to them for continuing to partner with me on homeschooling content on my channel. I will chat with you guys more about Night Zookeeper later in this video and how it is a part of our fourth grade homeschooling routine. So I wanted to give you an intro because I'm probably going to do a voiceover, but today I'm going to show you guys my fourth graders entire homeschooling routine. Two things to keep in mind. Number one, we are approaching the end of our school year and so some things she has finished. For example, handwriting, she has already finished her handwriting book. Wordly wise, she has already finished that as well. So there's a few elements that we are not currently doing because she's already finished them, but I will point out where I would have her do those things in the routine. The next thing is, is that I'm not gonna go into like curriculum and show you guys the curriculum I'm filming this just to give you an idea of the routine and flow that we have um, in our homeschool for fourth grade to hopefully just share and maybe give you guys a few ideas. Um, my fourth grader is she she's very independent um, when it comes to her schoolwork. I still you know am doing the majority of the teaching with her but she is able to read things and comprehend things and do her little sections in her language arts and things like that on her own so uh, i just wanted to share those few things with you guys but that's going to be it from me we're going to get into the routine let me know if you guys like these routine videos and if you want to see more of them by giving this one a thumbs up and leaving me a comment down below and as always if you have any questions on anything you see here feel Feel free to ask in a comment and I will get back to you. So here she is starting off our school day around the table, all of us together as a family. She is copying down verses from Proverbs. I found these through my friend and so we're killing quite a few school birds, so to speak, uh, with one book. She's learning spelling, writing, copy work, scripture, and so every day my kids write down a varying amount of verses in the time that I give them as they read through Proverbs and then transcribe those verses down. So that is what we've been starting our days with. And I really, really love these little books. They are linked on my Amazon, but you can also find them on christianbook.com. After that, we move in to our next portion of our morning time, which is World Watch News. I have been sharing World Watch with you guys a lot this year because this was the first year that I discovered it. It is probably one of my kids' absolute favorite things that we do in our homeschool, and it's just a fantastic resource for your children to hear bits and pieces of relevant news information without being overwhelmed, and also um, it's a fair journalism source. It is a Christian worldview, but there's no party affiliation, and so they are getting the truth. We also go through daily affirmations, just declaring truth. They say them out loud, and they've actually memorized this entire thing. My friend Jamie Kite has these that she made, and we love them. So here's the clip of World Watch that I was talking about. It's a 10-minute segment every day, and we watch it and discuss it as a family and um, my kids really like it like I was already mentioning. After we are done with our world news discussion, then we move on to our memory verse for the week. Sometimes I'll stick with the same verse and sometimes we will get a new one each week just depending. This one, the focus is a little off here, but it's a verse in 2 Timothy that they're all working on memorizing. Next, after that, I will read to them from our book that we're in. Earlier in the year, we were reading through the ology. Now we are reading the poetic retelling of the Pilgrim's Progress. My older two kids are reading the actual book of Pilgrim's Progress. And if you are a Christian and you've never read that book, I highly recommend it and encourage you to do it. Um, so I'm reading a chapter in there. 
and she's just listening. So my fourth grader is very good at listening to books. She enjoys listening to me read. And quite honestly, even if she didn't, I would still require her at this point to sit at the table with us. But she was wanting to do that from the time she was three and four years old. So she's definitely a child who has enjoyed learning and reading from the start. She's my only one that never went to preschool or any public school or a private Christian preschool like my son did. So she's one that I have had home with me every day, literally her entire life. And so she does really well with listening. And a lot of the books that I share, uh, I try to pick a good variety because she obviously still enjoys picture books, but my older kids enjoy that too. But also I do have high school aged kids. And so I'm trying to really equip them with knowledge. And so you know, some of the books that she listens to are above what would be considered a fourth graders comprehension level, but I'm totally fine with that because I will continue to come back to these things and her learning is just building off of exposure and previous things. So I try to do a good mix of things that are more in the elementary grade levels as well as meeting the needs of my high schooler, but we do it family style so everybody can listen. Like I'm reading a poem now, we do poetry every day. And so, you know, I'm just exposing them to all different varieties, all different things, and she is listening. So once I'm done reading, to them all the different things that we circulate through in morning cart. Then she moves on to uh, reading our read aloud. So I usually read all of these other books. And so sometimes I will have my kids pass around our read aloud book. We're currently reading a historical fiction book um, called uh, red berries, blue sky, something like that. I can't remember the title off my head, but you can probably see it in the upcoming clip. And so they each take turns reading aloud. This is great practice for reading in front of others, gaining confidence, and also learning how to read in an expressive tone with reading out loud. It's a skill that I feel like kids lose if they if you're not doing it often. So they read two or three pages and then pass it to the sibling. And that is, you know, Pass it to the sibling and that is you know what you're gonna see here in this next clip This is Hayashi holding a toy dog. It was on wheels and there was a string to pull it back and forth. Mrs. Hayashi had been rolling the wheels across her hand, but she put the toy behind her back when she saw Tommy. Tommy thought it was odd that Mr. Mrs. People in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, to ordain and establish this constitution for the United States of America. I just heard she just recited the beginning to the, or the preamble to the constitution, which is amazing. Amazing. I don't know many fourth graders that know that and I feel very accomplished that she successfully memorized that she was very motivated on her own to to do that I posted the preamble in our schoolroom and I found her reading it and memorizing it her and her older brother were kind of going back and forth and then we discovered the schoolhouse rock song which really helped with memorizing that so this constitution course is what we are doing in place of history so this on this day i uh, this would have been a history day but we're obviously doing the constitution course so she's been doing that with us this is from the good and the beautiful it's four grades four through eight although i do think that it is obviously 
um, could, could stretch grade levels, let's just say that. So we do history and science and opposition. So this was a history day. And this is the last thing that we do in this portion of her fourth grade school day. Next, the next clause talks about if the president dies or is removed, which is called impeached, or cannot fulfill his or her duties, who takes over the duties? Why is the vice president? The vice president. We don't know. So it is 1026 and we're having morning snack break. That's a part of the homeschool routine. So everyone will just grab a snack and then we're gonna go around the table and share answers there and then that will summarize our first half of our school day, which is our morning routine and covering um, history, US Constitution, uh, world, current world events, Bible, character trait, copy work from, the, from scripture, read aloud, poetry here, more history. So we really cover a lot through our morning learning time at the table. And that is the first part of my fourth graders homeschool routine. This video is sponsored by Night Zookeeper and I'm super excited to tell you guys about Night Zookeeper because we've reached that point in our homeschool day. So on occasion, about once a week, I will have my daughter who is in fourth grade who this video is showing you guys a little bit of her routine use Night Zookeeper in place of what would be language arts. Number one, she's still working on spelling, typing, computer literacy, reading, creative writing stories, paragraph formats, grammar, punctuation, all that good stuff. But she's also having a lot of fun doing it. And it helps me at this time of the school year when I'm trying to stretch my younger kids' lessons to finish with their older siblings so everyone finishes up the school year all at one time. So I've replaced language arts lessons one day a week with Night Zookeeper. Now, I'm sure all of you have heard of Night Zookeeper before because I've been telling you about them for the past few months, but if you haven't, Night Zookeeper is a creative writing platform, an award-winning creative writing platform for children ages five through 12. There's so many interactive games, um, free printables, lessons. They can even get feedback from an instructor when they complete a writing assignment. The next time they log back in, there might be some feedback. I really love the checklists also that Night Zookeeper gives to the kids before they submit their writing, asking them questions about sentence structure, punctuation, um, you know, using transitional words, all of those things that you're really focusing on in language arts uh, curriculums, no matter which company you use at this point in their school life, that is what we are focusing on, is expanding their writing, teaching them transitional words, teaching them varying sentence structure, teaching them different adjectives to use to add variety to their writing. And Night Zookeeper is so helpful for that. Your kids will absolutely love it. My kids love playing the games. They love logging in once a week when they're allowed to do it and just enjoying um, Night Zookeeper. Night Zookeeper would also be so great even if you're not a homeschooler through the summer months if you don't want your kids to backslide and forget all of the things that they've worked really hard on in school no matter where they attend night zookeeper can definitely help you with that so i will have a link to night zookeeper it will be down below for you guys if you use that link you're going to get a discount on your subscription and i do like to mention that they do have a multi-sibling plan so to save you guys a little bit of money there if you've got more than one child that would be using night zookeeper that will um, I'll be down below for you guys. So make sure you check it out. I know you will not regret it. It is so fun. And so many of you have tried Night Zookeeper since I started sharing them with you. And all of you tell me how much your kids love it. And it's just been really fun. So 
All that info will be down below for Night Zookeeper, but we are at that point in our homeschool day where my fourth grader comes upstairs and we start working on her independent subjects. So normally you would see her doing language arts um, in her course book, but today is her Night Zookeeper day. And so that is what she's gonna be doing in place of her actual language arts course. So I so now that we are upstairs, like I just said, she is getting out all of her materials um, for completing her independent work. As you guys have been told, if you watch my content regularly, I print out flows at the beginning of the school year. They don't have times on them because we don't operate on a timed schedule which I'm showing you guys here. So I make a new one of these every year because their subjects change, but it just, it's basically a daily checklist of what they move to um, next. And in the beginning of the school year, they do reference these often. However, now she doesn't even look at it. So since I told you guys, she's already finished handwriting, she's already finished wordly wise, she would basically be starting with her language arts on a normal, um, school day however on this day it was night zookeeper day so she was working on some spelling um, practice here with night zookeeper and then she moved on to some other games uh, with vocabulary she did a lot of games on spelling and vocabulary on this day on night zookeeper and that was in place of language arts so just so you guys know, this would be language arts time in our homeschool routine, but we were doing Night Zookeeper on this day. So once... So once she had been on Night Zookeeper for about 30 minutes, I went ahead and have her come over and start working on some of the worksheets from the spring bundle that I shared with you guys. These were working on pronouns and writing about horses and creating a horse story um, and just some quick little writing prompts. I were done with the spring bundle. We did all the things when I shared that with you guys. So now we're looking forward to the summer one, which I will definitely let you guys know about when that is coming out. That'll be something we do over the summer to just, you know, have a tiny bit of structure to our days, whether we're in the car traveling or at home. My horse is well fed and happy. She likes to go for long walks. My horse is a... Oh, that's a hard word. Pazol Pazwalski's horse? But did you spell it right? Yeah, I looked it up. <laughs> my horse is as big as a moose. That's what size they get to? Wow. My horse eats carrots. Horse fun facts, 205 bones in their body. Wow, I didn't know that. Horses can see 360 degrees of vision. That's a full circle, remember, from math? So they can they see behind them? Yes. Yeah, isn't that weird? Have 10 muscles in their ears. Cool. And the habitat is nine, eight, not nine, 90 acres of land, a big farm, and a lot of water. Good job. That would be fun, huh? So now you guys can see that she is in her room reading at least one chapter in her assigned reading book. She's currently reading Black Beauty and um, often she'll read more than one chapter because sometimes the chapters are short. I do not always assign books. I kind of let my kids choose and they seem to really enjoy that. So I just make sure that I have a lot of different options on hand. If there's one in particular that I want them to read, I'll tell them, but for the most part they choose and we keep a book log with that. After reading, it's time for math and math is her very last subject of the day. We are using the good and the beautiful for math and she really loves watching the video component, so that's what you guys are seeing here. I want you for myself every single day. 
So it is lunchtime. It's 12:15, and so um, generally this will happen because math is the last subject that she works on each day. So she has a few more problems here for the lesson today, and then she has this review side. So she's gonna. She's been working hard, look at all these numbers. Um, but she's down having lunch. I have lunch with the kids at this time too. So we're taking a lunch break. We always take one around 12 or 12.15. And then she's gonna come back up and finish math for her last subject of the day. So it is 1.25 and she's packing up all of her stuff. She's done with her schoolwork for the day and that is about five hours from when we started with lunch breaks built in and snack breaks so that's how long school generally takes my homeschooled fourth grade so that is going to be it for today's fourth grade homeschool routine video i hope you guys enjoyed seeing how we do things in our home sharing simply for you guys to just out of curiosity to see how we do things not implying that this is the absolute way to do things however she is my last little one and I've done this four times over and I've seen how this type of routine is so beneficial for your kids as they get older. So I hope you guys enjoyed seeing our fourth grade homeschooling routine. Make sure you check out the links to Night Zookeeper. Those will be down below for you guys. Take advantage of the discount and keep your kids really engaged with writing and computer skills um, always, but especially through the summer and breaks. So thank you for watching. Give me a thumbs up. Let me know if you guys want to see more of these and I will see you all in my next one really soon. Bye guys.